On today's show, we will discuss procrastination and how it can keep us from God's will. And later we will have Crystal Mitchell join us to share about the community-wide Easter musical. Two weeks ago, I woke up with a sizable lump on my lower stomach. It was very red and very sore. So obviously I called the doctors to, went to go get it checked out. And the one thing they wanted to do was an ultrasound. Well, I have a huge fear and many issues with doctors, <laughs> but getting an ultrasound did not bother me at all. Well, that was until this day. As I'm laying there, the nurse proceeds to tell me that she's going to have to push down pretty hard for about five minutes to get a good, clear image. She said it would be very uncomfortable and that many have said how much it hurt. She was giving me a warning. Well, let's just say immediately my blood pressure for sure went through the roof. I knew that just my shirt grazing it was very painful, so now I was filled with fear and anxiety. But thankfully, in that moment, I heard a small, still voice say, why not pray that it doesn't hurt? So right there on the table, I did just that. Lord, I ask that I would not feel anything and that this could be over quickly. As she started, I thought, hmm, I can't feel a thing. Is it going to get worse at some point? But before I knew it, it was over and I had felt nothing, not even a little. And remember I said that just my shirt touching it was painful earlier. I knew that God had answered that prayer. The nurse asked if I was okay and I responded, I'm good. And I want you to know why. I prayed and God answered and it did not hurt at all. She smiled and had no response, but I'm believing as this built my faith that day, a seed was planted for her. I think we often forget to invite God into our every day. Maybe we think it's too silly to ask or not big enough to bother him with, but I believe he desires to be part of it all. We just need to give him access and then see what he does. Now, I don't always remember to call on him in these moments, but I hope I get better at giving him access daily, moment by moment, because it truly is amazing to watch him just show up. It really does build the faith and trust, knowing that he's a good father just wanting to be part of his children's lives. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I hope you see in this scripture that we don't need to be anxious. All we need to do is pray. And in case anyone's wondering, the lump was an infection that needed an antibiotic. Come all good. And we, we are just three ladies with big opinions, always backed by a biblical standpoint. So let's talk about it. This segment is brought to you by Harry's Construction, whose motto is, if you can dream it, we can create it. They are the kitchen and bath design experts, so call Harry's Construction for all your remodeling needs. When it's time for a new roof, Champion Roofing is your best choice. We're a certified award-winning roofing contractor, meaning your roof is done right the first time. Call today. Champion Roofing, we're the solution. Welcome back to Let's Talk About It, and today's topic, <laughs> procrastination. I'd so, really rather wait till next time. <laughs> you would like to procrastinate. You knew I had to do it. <laughs> so procrastination, delaying or postponing what needs to be done. Would you guys consider yourself people who procrastinate or that you just, you can't live there? No, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I think it depends <laughs> on what it is. Well, we don't procrastinate on the things we want to do. Exactly we only right. procrastinate That's on right. the things we don't want to do. That's right. Like, I have these spindles that were taken off of my steps because we're redoing them. You ever paint a spindle? It's horrible. It's like 
It's tedious. I can't stand yeah. it. <laughs> and we did it on Saturday. Johnny right. and I worked together, but we could only do three sides because they're laying down. Yes. So that has to dry. And then you, well, guess what? What was I doing last night at 9.30 at night? Because the guy needed Because it had to be done. Yeah, because he's yes. putting them back today, and I'm down there because John's gone. Right. Painting spindles. Yeah. And I hated it. Mm-hmm. And it was on me every day since Saturday mm -hmm. to do it, and there I was at 9 o'clock last night painting spindles. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I hate it. Mm -hmm. But I did see this little quote. Procrastination is the grave where opportunity is buried. Mm. I said, yep. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> and, and the other thing is, I, this scripture came up, and at first I didn't even think it really was about procrastination. It said, do not boast about tomorrow, for you don't know what tomorrow brings. Mm. And it says, the attitude that defers things to come on an undefined one day assumes that you're granted another day. Right. So it's almost sinful to procrastinate mm -hmm. certain things because you're just assuming that you're going to be able to say sorry to somebody tomorrow mm -hmm. or you're going to be able to witness to somebody tomorrow and nobody knows that. Mm -hmm. So I th where I look at procrastination where it can become a sin mm -hmm. is if God has told you to do something mm -hmm. yes. and then you put it off. Mm -hmm. Because often what happens is we put it off out of fear, mm -hmm. not thinking we have the right resources or that we can really do a good job at whatever it is, you know, so we put it off. But then what happens is it often gets put off, mm -hmm. put off mm -hmm. and never gets done, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, I look at one um, thing for me on that side of things. Um, recently, I felt God speak to my spirit and say, I want you to ask for forgiveness at your Bible study for something you said last week. Mm. And if anybody knows me, they know that I hate that. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate that. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew that if I didn't do it the next week, that I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So I had, like, I had mm -hmm. to do it or I wasn't going to be obedient. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's the area where procrastination can become a sin. Mm -hmm. I don't think if you procrastinate on packing for a vacation or something like right. that that's sinful right it can get you into trouble maybe mm -hmm. or right. get you fran you know right but it, it leaves you frantic and i feel like for me if god has really instilled in my spirit something if i am procrastinating on it it's a pride thing mm -hmm. yeah because it takes it takes humility to to apologize for something you know that you've done wrong and I, I think a lot of us, I, I'm going to say in Western culture in America, we are very prideful people. And to it, it, that causes, our pride can cause us to procrastinate in things that we know we are supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And one <laughs> other area that I was thinking that it, I could kind of have it fall under the same categories is God wants us to do things well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so if we procrastinate because, oh, it just doesn't look fun or, right. you know, whatever, especially when it's to further his kingdom, mm -hmm. then we're being lazy and unproductive with our time. And mm -hmm. what could be if we had spent the time diligently mm -hmm. that he gave us, it could have been something wonderful. But because we became lazy or mm -hmm. unprepared for whatever reason, then we didn't do it to the fullest potential of that it could have been. Mm -hmm. And so I look at that as another way that procrastination can lead. And I think like my brain is like a three ring circus. Mm -hmm. Like there's an act going on in every quadrant of my brain. <laughs> Even as I sit here, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about 92 things. Mm -hmm. And so like, if I don't do it now, it's getting lost up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not that, it's not that I'm being defiant. It's just it's gone because something else has taken that place in the mm -hmm. circus. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, and then that makes us look incompetent. It makes us look defiant and yeah. all of those things. And that may not be the intention. Right. But, uh, right. You know, um, right. so I found that if it's, if, if it's there, you better just do it. Mm -hmm. But again, here I was last night painting spindles. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? <laughs> well, I had a lady, we're um, doing something with the ladies group at my church. 
um, called Secret Sisters, and they have to fill out a form so that we can then give them to people. Well, one lady asked for hers back because she wanted to add to it. She had forgotten. She just wanted to add a couple things mm -hmm. to it. And I immediately told myself, I got to grab that paper so that I can get it to her. But because I didn't do it right then, mm -hmm. then the next time I saw her, yep. it didn't. And I yep. was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, I know you asked. Yep. I left it at home. I didn't even think about it. So the next time I thought about it, I was like, go get it, do Kelly, it now. right now, mm -hmm. because that's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, when I think frequently we use the excuse of, oh, I got so busy or I'm so busy, we need to prioritize things that are important. Now, packing for a trip or something like that, or doing painting spindles, that can be more of a personality thing. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't pack early. I, I don't See, want I, to, and you probably do. I do, yes. and I was thinking it's because I'm so excited, it's something I want to go right, on. Right, So right. I'm packing early. That's right, because it's mm -hmm. something you want to do. Right. The spindles, you don't want to do. But I think a lot of that is personality driven, and I don't think that borders on sin. Right. Mm -hmm. When I agree. We are making excuses to do the next right thing. That is when it is sin. Right. Mm -hmm. That is when it is sin. And that's what um, I kind of just wanted to bring up. Yes. As we're talking about it, that there are things with procrastination that I don't believe fall in the sin category. That's right. And then there are other things that I do believe can mm -hmm. fall in the sin category. And mm -hmm. so you have to kind of evaluate that for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, if God is speaking something to you and you are not doing it, then okay, you need to look at as to right. why and right. Well, even okay, here we are in March. I'm assuming there are a lot of people who said to themselves, "I'm going to start reading my Bible this year," and maybe they did it for one or two days, and then they miss some. It's a habit you get out of. It doesn't matter when you do things. It doesn't matter when you begin, mm -hmm. just, just begin, begin it. Yeah. The same thing with exercise or, or eating right, reading your Bible, praying. Those things can become a habit that is a good thing. Right. You know, it, you have to make it part. Don't put off beginning something or restarting something. God's mercies are new every morning. And I love that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thankfully, they his are. His mercies. His mercies. Right. You know, when he is merciful. We, can, we tend to combine grace and mercy, but they are two very different <coughs> things. And his mercies are new every morning. Mm. We, get a, a, we get a restart. Right. We get a restart. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get so down on yourself like, yes. well, I missed a week. I've blown I missed, it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And a lot of times, like I know I have a son that he used to be in charge of taking the trash out. Well, mm. we tell him 90,000 times on yep. Wednesday night, take the trash out. I am, I am. And his intentions was to do it. Mm -hmm. But he procrastinated until the next thing you know, it's the next day and the next morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have the and, same son, I guess. And it's it's very <laughs> frustrating. And John looks at that as rebellion. Yeah. But I didn't feel like it was rebellion. I think his intentions were good. Mm. He just... Mm. Delayed, 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 and just like his mother, mm. he forgot all about it. That's really good, though, to realize the difference, that it's not a rebellious thing. He's not saying, I'm not going to do this because I don't like you. Right. He's just putting it off. Mm -hmm. Just putting it off. And don't we all put off things? Oh, yeah, like don't we just, yeah, we put, Anything we don't like yes. or enjoy gets put off. It gets yes. put on the side. Like mm -hmm. It just does. That's yeah. what procrastination is. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Not saying we like it, but... <laughs> yeah. So I just want to end with this verse that I have written here. 1 Corinthians 14, 30 says, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Mm -hmm. And when we do it that way, then we don't get so stressed. We don't have those anxieties because we did it in a fitting and orderly way. So next time you want to procrastinate, maybe think, why am I procrastinating? And see what God wants to do in and through you. When we come back, we will have our guest for the day. Mouthwatering family recipes, easy to make meals, humor and faith fill the inspiring show, Dano on the Counter. Born with only half a spine, Dano Burkhardt was never supposed to be able to hold his head up. 
Despite countless surgeries, a stroke, leg amputations, and kidney transplants, Dano developed a contagious love for life. Join Dano on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. on Fox 8 as he shares his easy-to-make dishes and the hope that keeps him pushing forward. Impact Productions, a multi-layer technology company providing on-site, online, and in-studio video services. Contact Impact Productions to capture your story. Welcome back to Let's Talk About It, and today we have my friend Crystal Mitchell with us. So glad you could join us. Before we get into our topic, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name's Crystal Mitchell. Um, I've been married for 37 years. I have four children, 13 grandchildren. Ooh, 13. Wow. 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 <laughs> yeah, life is busy. Uh, yeah, I would heavily imagine. involved in my church. And That's awesome. Good. So we brought you here today to talk about an upcoming event. It's the community-wide Easter musical called Revealed, and this is. Um, Something we had stopped doing for a while. We started back last year, so we're in year two. And you joined us last year for yes. the first time, and that's how I got to know Crystal. And man, she is so fun and such. Yes, she is. <laughs> yeah, I just love her so much. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> but what made you want to join the Community Easter Musical? I think the biggest thing was the word community. Mm. Um, I I. Just, I saw it on Facebook and it popped out at me, uh, probably more the Holy Spirit that just mm -hmm. said, you need to be involved in something more community minded. Mm. Um, it's enough, yes, to serve at your local church, but something bigger. Um, I just wanted to make that difference. Uh, mm. And I, I, I thought it would probably be fun. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an introvert, so that's, <laughs> that's okay to be involved you meet, in. You meet you for five minutes. You no, know you're yeah, not an introvert. Like, there's all. really no, nobody <laughs> that is a stranger, and so I knew that I could, I could have fun doing it as well. But more than anything, it was just that, that tug, that pull that said, you need to do this, and I knew that was God talking, and so... I showed up, and I'm really glad that I did. Mm -hmm. We are glad that you did also. Now, you've been acting for some time. I've even seen you in some of your church musicals. What makes you enjoy this aspect of it so much? Like, what is it about acting and singing? Well, believe it or not, I did not act growing up. I was did always, really? no, I did not. Um, there were, uh, I went to private schools and there were no drama hmm. uh, teams or anything to get involved with there. So it wasn't until I was in my 40s that we decided oh. to start doing musicals. Oh. But you've at the always church. sang, right? I have sung. sung in church. My very first solo in church was when I was three years old. Okay. Aww. So, awesome. um, and I think I must have been, I have granddaughters now that sing. Um, like from we little, they just, they sing all the time. And I think that must have been what my mother saw in me Aww. that I just always sang. And so she worked with me. My first solo was at three years Aww. old and I have never stopped that. Aww. So, uh, I think there was, was a little performer in there all yeah. along. Um, but true, the, the acting part of it didn't come until much later. Mm. Um, and I enjoyed it very much. So... What was one of your favorite roles that you've ever played? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I think one of my most fun roles uh, was playing Anna in the temple. Um, mm. And uh, they had written a song, our, our worship leader and drama director had written a song for me to sing and it was just absolutely beautiful and I got to hold at that time, baby Jesus. Um, so I had a live baby through that whole song trying to sing, mm. and, you know, that was, I mean, it was, it was just precious, Aww. but that role really was, was neat. Um, probably mm. the other one was when, my very first one, when um, my son was playing Jesus and they needed a singing Mary. Mm. <laughs> they, 
they knew I could sing, so they said, can you act? I don't know. <laughs> so we tried that, but being so the real Mary, mother Jesus' son. mother, and he was really oh, my wow. son. That was that was wow. really special. That was very good. special. Yeah. yeah. So last year you were Mary. I was. Kind of last minute, yes. sort of. And it's such a heavy part because you don't really have it any is. words, mm -hmm. right. but it's what you show on your face that yeah. everybody has to be able to yes. experience that through mm -hmm. you. What was that like? Um, I, you, you pour yourself into that yeah. when you realize. Multiple times. Uh, multiple times. Yeah. Right, um, right. More when than you one, realize yes. the gravity of he did this for me. Yes, mm -hmm. it's all symbolic, mm -hmm. um, but of course, Jonathan made it very easy to, uh, mm -hmm. to you know, just do what I needed to do. But when you think about the deep love Christ had right. for me and what he went through for me, mm -hmm. it's very easy to then mm -hmm. draw mm -hmm. yeah. the emotion that you mm -hmm. need to put out there. So yeah. it was very enjoyable. For you me. did a great job Thank expressing you. Thank what it would have been like. Yes. And so this year, the musical that we are doing is called Revealed. And my husband, Troy Ferguson, wrote it. And um, we've been practicing since January, getting ready for it. And you have a role in this musical. Tell us what that's been like. Um, the role of Anna is a 60-ish grandmother. So I kind of filled the bill. Yeah. <laughs> kind of worked and out. So that was that was like, that's a no-brainer to, <laughs> to audition for that and say, Okay, let's try this. But um, she's very different than I would be, but I'm having a lot of fun, and the kids that we're working with are great, and of course working um, with the, my husband. Uh, Daryl is playing my <laughs> husband, and I mean, it's just been wonderful. Reading through the story, Troy's always so good about taking a modern character mm -hmm. and, and making the issue so relevant mm -hmm. to what we are all going through mm -hmm. today. Um, and sometimes the things that the church doesn't always recognize in what people might be going through, um, bring it to their attention because we as the church need to step up. And uh, I don't want to reveal too much, <laughs> but I believe that uh, they're going to find a storyline that, that offers them an opportunity to serve our community even mm. better. Yeah, it's relatable. When he does the modern story, it makes it more relatable mm -hmm. for right. people. And that was one of the things I really loved about last year's when we went and saw it. It, it wasn't just your typical Easter story, right. which is big enough as it is. Oh, yes. But it was very personal. It became very mm -hmm. personal. Yes. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing this year. I'm so excited time. about it. If you were to tell somebody watching that maybe has thought about joining the musicals, but it's kind of like, oh, I'm not sure, what would you maybe give as advice to say, we'd love to have you, come on out? Well, it's fun. It is fun. Uh, there are people that you maybe know on Facebook or mm -hmm. just acquaintances that you get to know on a deeper level. Um, and you find out so much more about each of the pe persons who are participating. Right. Uh, that in, in itself for me, I'm a people person. And so for me, that was uh, a big draw. Uh, just the, the spirit of things mm. as it evolves into, you, know, you get down to those last practice days, those, those dress rehearsals, and you're tired. And someone will grab your hand, just pray with you, and mm -hmm. you know, I, and then just walk away. And you know you're being loved and cared for by precious people mm -hmm. in the church yeah. um, as a whole. Because I don't go to church with a, most of the people that are in this musical. Um, and so to, to make it, I always call that the big church, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the worldwide church. And just knowing you're part of that kind of a family. Mm -hmm. um, it's just very encouraging. And uh, you, I think that, especially if you are any kind of musically or theatrically inclined, um, it is not a waste of time at all. Right. 
my favorite is actually those weeks prior to the musical. Where it's That's a little more intense. Yeah, I'm not a big yes. fan of the Thursday night practices, mm -hmm. but I love <laughs> mm -hmm. the week to two weeks prior because mm -hmm. it's just such connection. It is. Such um, growth. It's just, so, it's, I don't know, it's my favorite time for sure. Me too. And just, and you know, and you know, like we have prayer time with each other. Yes. And I remember last year, a teenager praying over oh. me and it gave me a whole different perspective of that girl and I believe I was in that group you were I, in that group I was yeah. I wow. was blown there's away. bonds and yes stuff in mm. that time yes. mm. yeah absolutely mm -hmm. well I just want to thank you for coming and sharing a little thank bit about yeah. how it is to be part of one of these musicals and if you look at the screen we will give you information of where you can purchase tickets the cost the dates and where it will be held this year because that all is different so make sure you look at the screen and pick up those tickets when we come back we will have our tip for the day does tax preparation overwhelm you do you want assurance that your taxes are done right do you want to ensure that you're getting your maximum refund let me tell you about the new life worship center tax ministry this ministry began over 14 years ago, and in their first year, they helped two people with their taxes. The second year, they increased to around 100. Since then, they've grown to a 25-member team of volunteers from around the world. The creator of this ministry, Scott Seifer, began tax preparation in the Air Force, and H&R Block equipped him to oversee his thriving ministry. Over the years, they have helped 7,100 people receive a total of more than $10 million in tax refunds. And all that is asked is a $30 minimum donation. We encourage you to take advantage of this ministry opportunity. Contact them at 814-215-1933 for more details. Do you ever have trouble making your kids Easter baskets with something they will actually like that isn't candy, especially for those teenagers? Well, here's a few things I've done in previous years that may help you out. They always like cash, so maybe put $5 or $10 in that basket. Or how about a gift card to one of their favorite places? You could put in a new phone case, a pop socket, or even a phone charger, because we always can use more of those, right? Lip balm, fun pens, a tumbler, or a card game or some other ideas. I like to add in things that I know will be needed soon, like baseball gloves, baseball socks, and pants. As they get older, it seems harder, but maybe these will help you get started. And a few dates to remember throughout March. March 4th is National Sons Day, so shout out to mine, Parker and Jackson, love ya. March 6th, Oreo Cookie Day. March 9th, National Get Over It Day. This one had me laughing. March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. March 19th, National Let's Laugh Day and March 30th, National Take a Walk in the Park Day. And until next time, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm.